Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. It's great to finally be back with you for our weekly chat, our podcast. Hoping that the past months have been a blessed one for you and your loved ones, that you're all doing well, that you're staying safe, but most importantly, that you're taking the time to be family in everyday life. So, after all this hiatus of dealing with all this stuff going on in, in, in life, um, it's obviously the Holy Advent season, the Christmas Lenten season. So I'd like to offer some thoughts on the Advent season and why it's so crucial to our lives, but most importantly, for our salvation. So stay tuned. First, though, let's start with our prayer. O Heavenly King, the Comfort of the Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere and fillest all things, treasury of blessings, and giver of life, come and abide in us, and cleanse us from every impurity, and save our souls, O good one. So, let's start with a, a couple of reflections about the Advent season. And then we'll talk about some specific virtues that we need to we need to be manifesting during this holy season. Let me start with this wonderful little reflection from Seek First the Kingdom, a practical guide to living the Orthodox life by Father Cornel Todesia, a Romanian priest. <coughs> and this one is entitled The Christmas season is very special every year. This is what he writes. The 300th anniversary of Voltaire's birth has passed. Few people have heard of him. And among those who have, few will know why or how he's important to mankind. During his career, Voltaire, a philosopher and an author, predicted that Christianity would be extinct, a thing of the past, a relic, that it would happen during his lifetime. While we do not deny Voltaire's contribution to the world in literature and philosophy, we can say that he is passé. Christianity, however, is alive and well. Voltaire not only predicted the fall of Christianity, but he also suggested a few ways of how to bring about the demise of Christianity. He claimed that in order for Christianity to die, the keeping of Sunday as a holy day must be halted. Voltaire's suggestion was enacted during the reign of communism in the Eastern Bloc nations. Growing up in communist Romania was a struggle to keep Sunday as a holy day. In most communist nations, if you know the history of, of, of their development, the churches were under severe persecution, people were under severe perse 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 persecution. My own grandparents, who, who lived in Serbia and came over, related stories about how they had to put up a, a picture of, of Tito in their homes so that if the, if the guard, guards came by, they would see the picture of Tito, right? The leader of Yugoslavia. And they had to hide their icons of, of our patron Slava, St. George. Anyway, in our country, Voltaire, of course, said that in order for Christianity to die, Sunday must no longer become a holy day. It must become just a regular day. As we all know, much has changed in America regarding Sunday. I can recall growing up when the blue laws were in effect. There was no shopping. Um, you couldn't really, uh, stores were closed. That's all changed. Sunday is now just a regular day where people can go and do whatever they want to do. Again, just looking at, you know, as, as the dean of our, our Pittsburgh deanery, I can see in many of our parishes that 
uh, parents are struggling because Sundays have now become days when there are activities for their children's swimming, football, soccer, hockey, basketball, whatever. Meetings to go to, dance recitals to go to, whatever. All designed not by those people in those activity leadership positions, designed by the devil to take us away from the one thing necessary, to observe the eighth day, the Lord's day, as a day of rest. How does that apply to, apply to Advent? This year, Christmas falls on a Sunday, on, on the old calendar, January 7th. The Nativity of Christ is surpassed by the resurrection of our Lord only by Pascha, rightfully so. Christmas is the beginning of our salvation, the event by which God comes to us, right? God with us, as you'll hear uh, our, our, our choir sing in a second. This year, Christmas will be glorified without forsaking that little Pascha, that Sunday of the resurrection. And because it falls on a Sunday, this Christmas is even more special. Let me take a little break, and let's listen to our beloved St. Salva Choir singing, God is with us. I just love that song. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the challenge of Advent and, and, and the season of Advent, or Christmas Lent, as the Church Fathers call it. One of the things that I think we, we need to move away from, and I kind of made reference to this on, on Sunday in my homily, with all the stuff that goes on during 
the Advent season. You know, we're all getting ready for Christmas and, and we're trying to get things done and we're trying to get the house in order and try to get gifts bought. We're trying to get food stuffs prepared and whatever. Um, those, all those things are important. Absolutely. But are they, are they more important than us taking time for being with Christ, being in the church? In other words, we're doing everything possible to prepare our, our physical bodies for the Christmas feast day, the holiday. What are we doing for our souls? As we fast physically to prepare ourselves for Holy Communion, we also have to fast spiritually. And how do we do that? Um, by preparing ourselves. By taking up some of the virtues of, of, of the Christian life. Right? We know that the Christmas Lent, Advent, is about expectation. We're all expecting something good to happen during the, the Christmas Lenten season. In an abstract sense, we expect during the feast that God appears in the flesh as a, as a child, right? Born of the Virgin Mary. We expect that, that coming of Christ enables us to, to be united to him and prepares us to receive the King of all when he comes again in his glory. So that expectation is very personal for us. We all take this personal journey during the Christmas Lenten season. But that preparation has got to be, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, a very personal, active thing in our life. When we physically fast, of course, what's the new term that they use? We become hangry, right? When we get hungry, we get upset, we get stressed, whatever, you know, because we can't eat certain things that we like to eat. But more importantly, when we fast, you know, we're really disciplining our bodies and our minds to focus on that one thing needful. And what is that one thing needful? What are we doing in this holy Christmas Lenten season, this holy Advent season, what are we doing to be Christ-like? That means, obviously we're fasting, not just from food, with our mouth, what we say, with our eyes, what we look at, with our ears, what we listen to. And one of my favorite examples of this is, um, and I've sp spoken to this many times in podcasts, but also in, within my parish, you know, the, the sin of gossip is so overwhelmingly prevalent in the world, in the churches, in meetings. I mean, it's amazing to me how we think so little impact gossip has on, on, on life. It's just the opposite. My dear mother, God rest her soul, told me one time, if you cannot say something to someone's face, but you need to say it behind their back, it's evil, it's wrong. When she first told me that, I was in high school, and I thought, eh, there goes mom overreacting again. As I grew up and became a little, a little wiser, I realized how truthful that is. So one virtue that we need to practice more of in the Christmas Lenten season, of course, is watching what we say and how we talk to people, what we think about people. Another virtue is when we fast, we have to fast not so much for, and I heard, I've heard this many times, boy, it's a great chance to lose weight. Boy, it's a great chance to do, do, more, to do more exercise. That's all well and good. Fasting really helps us, though, if we're really truly conscientious about it. It disciplines ourselves, our whole physical beings, to focus on that one thing needful again. Because when we fast, that means we're doing something in place of eating or reading, I'm sorry, or, or looking at something or listening or talking about something. That means we should be doing things, spiritual things. Praying more. Reading the lives of the saints. Reading the church fathers. Reading the, the holy scriptures. 
We all have those wall, wall calendars that gives us the verses for each day. But also, almsgiving. The Christmas Lenten season, by its very nature, talks about gift giving. What are we doing in our personal life, in our communal life as the parish, as, as, as parishes, as the body of Christ? What are we doing to help those in need, the less fortunate, the hungry, the lame, the shut-ins, the sick, the naked? What are we doing? Um, I'm blessed in my parish. We just finished a wonderful Thanksgiving uh, needy fun where we helped six families with both Thanksgiving foodstuffs, but also uh, uh, gift cards and monetary donations to, to needy families. We're doing the same thing now for Christmas. Um, but we should be doing this as individual families. I've got two families in my parish that have actually adopted needy families to buy presents for the children, foodstuffs for the family. Um, I wish I could tell you I could get you know eight or ten families to do that. Uh, right now I've got two sponsors, so um, we can do those kind of things though. That helps us re remember, for lack of a better phrase, that Christ is the reason for the season, right? And listen, all of those of you who know me know that I am the the as I've been told, the Serbian equivalent of Clark Griswold from uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I love Christmas. If you come to my, my house in White Oak, it looks like the North Pole. I love it that way. But I also know that that's like one tiny little smidgen of what we're supposed to be doing during the Christmas Lenten season. And I think the more that we take the time personally to prepare ourselves through Holy Confession, through Holy Communion, through almsgiving, through fasting, through prayer, through sacrificing ourselves for the good of others, then truly when we come to the feast of our Lord's birth on Christmas Day, we will feel that joy. We will feel that peace. And that's what we ask for, the greatest gift of all to be at peace and enjoy with Christ. That's all I have for today. Let me close with our prayer to the Theotokos. Steadfast attraction of Christians, constant advocate before the Creator, do not despise the cry of us sinners, but in your goodness come speed to help those who call upon you in faith. Hasten to hear our petition and to intercede for us, O Theotokos, for we always protect those who honor you. So, my dear loved ones, it was great to be back with you for our podcast. Uh, next week, I know I've got a clergy brotherhood meeting on Thursday, so we'll probably do our podcast either, either Wednesday or, or Friday of next week, but I will let you know, okay? Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Know that we lift you all up in prayer. We ask that you pray for us as well, because in lifting each other up in prayer, we are truly all united in Christ. God bless. <laughs>